As women, we have month-long hormone cycles and our hormones are changing day to day. We are quite literally not the same person every day, so why would we eat the same every day? It makes much more sense to eat cyclically in tandem with our cycle to help support the different phases and shifts that we experience throughout the month. And when we start doing this, this can help us have more energy, it can help balance our hormones, it can help us have less painful periods and just set our body and mind up for success. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jills and I talk all about health, wellness, and self-development for women. So if that's something you wanna learn more about, be sure to hit the red subscribe button below as well as the notification bell so you don't miss when I put out any new videos. Let's talk about cycle syncing, but specifically for your diet. Now I already have a really comprehensive video about cycle syncing already. So if you wanna learn more about that in general, then you can find that here. But today I wanted to chat more about diet and specifically how we can shift how we eat and what we eat to the different phases in our cycle to feel our best. Because our hormones are changing every single day, we need to account for this and it would be silly to just ignore it. And this is just another reason why strict diets do not work. And that's because they don't take into account these hormonal and cyclical changes that we experience throughout our menstrual cycle. We should not be eating the same way day in and day out. And our body intuitively knows this if we just take the time to listen to it. So it's crucial that we nurture and support these different hormone shifts throughout our cycle. So let me dive into how we can do that. Real quick, I need you to understand the different phases of the menstrual cycle for you to kind of understand what I'm talking about in this video. So if you're already fully aware of these four different phases, then you can just skip on over to the next section of this video. But if not, then let me briefly go over what those are. Now, the first phase is the menstrual phase. This is the one that I think we are all the most familiar with. This is of course when we're bleeding and this usually lasts around five-ish days or so. And this is when all of our hormones are at their lowest points. Next is the follicular phase and this is the time between your period and ovulation and this usually lasts for around seven to ten days or so and this is when your estrogen is slowly rising and your energy is starting to rise again too. After that is the ovulatory phase so this is not surprisingly when we are ovulating and when we can make a baby. So this lasts usually about four days or so and in the beginning of this phase that's when our estrogen peaks and this triggers other hormones to release an egg. Lastly is the luteal phase. This is the time between ovulation and our next period. So this lasts about 10 to 16 days, but usually about two weeks on average. And that second week, that's usually when we experience those PMS symptoms if we have imbalanced hormones. And during this phase, this is when our progesterone is supposed to peak in our cycle. So you need to be familiar with these different phases throughout your cycles so you know what I'm talking about throughout the rest of this video. And if you want to learn how to track your cycle naturally using your temperature so you can identify which phase of your cycle you're in at a certain time or when you're ovulating or any of that other good stuff, then you can check out this video here because I go into detail on that and it's pretty easy to understand. So now that I've got that covered, let's move on to the good stuff. First, let's talk about the menstrual phase and what and how we should be eating to best support us during this time. So like I mentioned before, this is the point in our cycle when all of our hormones are generally at their lowest points. And this is the time where we will most likely feel the most tired out of that entire month. So this is the time to eat really warm, cozy, and nourishing foods. This is not the time to be eating lots of large salads, tons of raw veggies, juice cleanses. That is just not gonna feel good for your body during this time. Our body needs warmth and easy nourishment. So things like soups and stews are actually really great during this time because they're warm and they're really easy to digest. And because your hormones are lower, getting enough protein and healthy fat too is really important because this can help to kind of stabilize your energy levels and your mood. And I mentioned that it's important to eat warm food because according to traditional Chinese medicine, the menstrual phase is the quote coldest phase in our cycle. And so we need to bring warmth to our body and warmth to our uterus. And I know that sounds a little bit funky, but just eating lots of warm foods during this time can really help you to feel better and can sometimes really help with minimizing things like cramps too. And think about the cold, it's stagnant and contracts, right? But warmth kind of helps things to flow easier and open up and move a little bit easier. So during this phase, you really want to stick to warm cooked foods during this time. Now it's important to remember that your body is doing a lot of work during this time in your cycle. And so you want to, in general, just be really easy and gentle on your body in all aspects, but especially with food too. So aim for eating nutrient dense meals that can provide a lot of value for your body. Some foods that are especially great during the menstrual phase are foods like red meat. If you eat meat, seafood, kelp, 
blueberries, beets, kale, but cooked kale, buckwheat, and wild rice. They're all packed with vitamins and minerals and will also help to balance your blood sugar, which is also super important during this time. Some of these foods are also very, very restorative for the blood and the kidneys, according to traditional Chinese medicine, which needs extra support during this phase in your cycle. Okay, next is the follicular phase. So this is when our energy is gonna start increasing again. We'll start to feel a bit more like ourselves and we'll be ready to tackle those to-dos. Now remember, this is when our estrogen is supposed to be increasing. Now when it comes to food, this is when you'll wanna be eating more of that kind of lighter, fresher, more vibrant foods. And it's less likely that you'll crave carbs during this time, unless of course you're under a lot of stress at work or in life, but in general, just based off of your hormones, you'll crave more lighter, fresher foods and this will feel good to you during this time. This will be supportive to you during this time and this can help you to feel even more energized. So this is a good time for plenty of veggies and leaner protein. So think foods like zucchini, carrots, chicken, artichoke, and string beans. Now, flax seeds are also really great during this time because they can help promote estrogen, which is a good thing at this point in your cycle. And oats are also really great because they're just a good healthy grain to give you that slow burning energy. Now, another thing is it's really great to add in fermented foods like sauerkraut, things like that, because this can help build up that good, healthy, beneficial gut bacteria, which can help with estrogen metabolism throughout your entire cycle, which is really, really crucial for balancing your hormones. The way you eat can really impact the success of your ovulation in the next phase, so it's really important to support your body as it prepares for this. So next is the ovulatory phase, and this is one of the best phases in my opinion. We usually have the most energy, we enjoy being really social, our mood's usually really stable and really happy, and it can just feel really good. So according to traditional Chinese medicine, this is a hot phase in our cycle, so we can thrive off of cooler foods like raw foods. So fresh fruits and veggies, salads, smoothies, juices, this can all feel really good during this time, really supportive and really refreshing. Not to mention they're packed with vitamins and minerals, so they're also really great for balancing your hormones effectively. It's really interesting, but our calorie requirements actually change depending on what phase of our cycle we're in and what our hormones are like. And if we try to stick to a certain calorie number every single day throughout our month-long cycle, then this can likely be very detrimental to our health. And that's why I encourage you so much to eat intuitively and really listen to your body because there are times when we need to eat more and there are times when we need to eat less. And hormones can be one factor, but also other things like exercise and stress and sleep and all that kind of stuff can really impact this. So of course, listen to your body. However, I never recommend counting calories in general because it's just not helpful at all and can put you in just a bad mindset. But it is really important to note this and be aware of this. And I'll talk about this more in a few seconds in the next phase. So anyway, during the ovulatory phase, you generally don't need as many carbs during this time and you'll likely feel feel satisfied with lighter grains. So some good foods during this time are things like quinoa, Brussels sprouts, bell peppers, spinach, tomatoes, strawberries, raspberries, but just follow your body's cue about eating lighter foods and packing more veggies into your meal. So last is the luteal phase. So this is the time, especially the second half of this phase, when we'll likely feel those pesky and annoying PMS symptoms if we have imbalanced hormones, which unfortunately a lot of us do, so a lot of us will experience this. During this time, our progesterone is supposed to be peaking and supposed to be higher than our estrogen, but unfortunately this balance of hormones can get thrown off quite easily and this can lead to those PMS feelings like irritability, anxiety, depression, fatigue, insomnia, all those kind of things. Now let's get back to what we were saying about how our calorie needs change during different times in our cycle. So in the luteal phase, our caloric needs are actually much higher. We actually need more food, more fuel, more energy. This isn't just all in your head, it's actually true and it's actual science. Our metabolism increases during this phase. However, what happens a lot of the time is that we can feel bad for needing more food, for feeling hungrier, for wanting more food. We feel like we should be eating the same amount every single day, but that's just not realistic according to our hormones and the different shifts and phases in our cycle. And when we restrict food, this can lead to cravings later on, especially cravings like carb and sugar cravings because this is quick fuel 
fuel for our body. Our body is literally trying to keep us healthy and keep us energized by craving this. And if we don't give our body the fuel and the food that it needs to thrive, then you're very likely going to have these cravings and maybe binges later on right before your period. And your hormones can get thrown off balance, your mood can get thrown off balance. So I highly recommend that you listen to your body's natural hunger cues here. Another thing during this phase is that we need more carbs throughout the day. And when we do eat more carbs, and I'm talking about healthy complex carbs here, this can also help to minimize cravings too. So some good things to eat for this are brown rice, sweet potato, squash. This is all really supportive and healthy during this time. We also need more B vitamins during this phase because this can help support healthy progesterone levels. And again, if we don't have enough progesterone, this can lead to PMS symptoms. Now when it comes to veggies, we want to start shifting to more cooked veggies as opposed to raw veggies. That's also a really good idea to eat a lot of high fiber foods like chickpeas and apples and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower because this can help to basically flush out any excess estrogen from your body that it doesn't need. And remember that PMS is pretty much either caused by too much estrogen, too low of progesterone, or very likely a combination of both. So we need to eat foods that are supportive of these hormones and can help bring them to the right levels. Baked root vegetables are also really great during this time because they give you a little bit of natural sugar and can also help to increase your serotonin and dopamine levels a little bit, which can help with balancing your mood, feeling more emotionally well, feeling more grounded and feeling less irritable. If you really listen to your body during this phase, you'll naturally crave more food and more carbs and that's totally okay. And I highly encourage you to honor these cues. So if you start eating more cyclically and really balancing your hormones in this way and honoring your body these natural cravings, then it's likely that your hormones will become more balanced, your mood and your energy levels will be more balanced, hopefully your periods will be less painful and less irregular, and you'll just feel better overall in general. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, I have another video about how to track your cycle naturally using your temperature. So if you don't know how to do that yet and identify what phase of your cycle you're in at what time, then I highly recommend you check that out and try to learn that. It's very, very easy and it can really tell you a lot about your cycle and your hormones. And there's also an app called Flow that can give you some guidance around cycle syncing and kind of tell you or at least predict what phase of your cycle you're in at what time. Remember that all these phases flow gently into the next. They're not completely siloed. So when you change your diet, you can just slowly and gently start changing your diet to match whatever phase of your cycle you're in. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe because I'm also going to be talking about how to sync your life to your cycle relating to exercise, work and productivity, and sex and love. And it's all really juicy and interesting stuff, so I hope you stick around. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. And go watch these two videos right here. And thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a good day. Bye.